Hey guys, Dr. Danny McLean here, ADIO Clinic, Chiropractic. Sorry, let me do that open. Whew, been a long day. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Dr. Danny McLean, that's my name, ADIO Chiropractic Clinic, Libertyville, Illinois. I wanted to come back to you uh, with another clinical tidbit on accurate assessment, uh, accurate thinking, and the injury series that we've been doing. Um, another question that came up, not today, but this week in clinic, I wrote them down. I wasn't quite ready to make a video on it when it came up, so I wanted to take the time to do it now. Um, the difference between different kinds of injuries, like how does it come on? It's one of the questions that we ask all the time to make sure that we're thinking accurately about what you have going on, what the problem is, uh, how to best treat it, because what the problem is will determine the treatment, which will then determine the outcome, right? So you have input, process, output. Hopefully that you got that. So um, there are really three different types of injury mechanisms, if you want to call them that. Uh, one is an acute injury, like uh, slip and fall, bang, injury happens, right? Then there's the chronic repetitive injury where it's like sitting at the computer like a troll and your posture just starts to fade and gravity slowly crushes you into nothing um, and it breaks everything down. So, uh, or, you know, the people that stand and do, they do factory work, that do, that work at a uh, grocery store checking out or, or stocking or any kind of repetitive chronic motion. I see a lot with uh, hairstylists and mechanics and, uh, you know, who else? Uh, athletes, they get a lot of that. Um, anyway, so if that kind of fits your job description and it could be acute, it could be chronic active or chronic inactive. So that's another way to look at it. Um, or then you have sort of the worst of both worlds, which is the compound injury. That's where you have sort of this slow, steady, mild, chronic thing, and then all of a sudden, wham! I got a guy that I've been treating for a while. Um, he was in pretty rough shape when we started, and he's significantly better off all of his pain meds and stuff, able to function, can do a whole bunch of things he wasn't able to do before uh, because we've been really taking good care of him, and it's we've been managing his case pretty well. I think he's happy, I'm happy, we're doing, doing well. Uh, but he was... Whew. So he said, let's see, um, he had a whiplash injury that was kind of untreated or undertreated. And he also had a job where he's working 60, 70 hours a week. Um, so he had sort of both, right? Well, he was under care and uh, for just, you know, re regular everyday stuff and then was uh, struck from behind the vehicle. So it was his second whiplash and it messed him up pretty bad. He was in pretty intense pain, numbness, tingling, radiating. So he was already pretty far gone. Uh, just because his because of the original whiplash put him off, and then just the the daily wear and tear on that misalignment was causing him some issues. Then he got really injured uh, from the second collision, which was pretty bad. Um, we had him pretty much all squared up, but he was having headaches and tooth problems and jaw issues and couldn't sleep and sorry about my phone, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, we'll just wait a second. Anyway, so. He was under care, and then he got struck again. All the all the while, while he's under care, he was getting, uh, you know, he was getting a lot of wear and tear build up over a period of time just at work. So he had a long drive into work, a long drive home from work, a lot of hours while he was at work, a lot of sitting at the computer. Uh, his ergonomics at work weren't really the greatest. So I mean, he was a pretty tall guy, uh, but really, I mean, the the average workstation's not made meant for everybody. It's meant for the average person. So there was a there was a kind of a messy situation, but typically if somebody has an acute issue, uh, we would treat it one way. If somebody has a chronic issue, we treat it a little bit a different way. In this case, we kind of had to just kitchen sink it. Um, but the good news is you can still get a lot of benefit. But the reason why that's important is we're looking at the mechanism of injury as to determine how we will treat, what your expected outcomes are, and when we start the other parts of the process. Um, really, there's three, there's three phases of care. There's the initial get you out of pain. Uh, then there's the, you know, that's about 80% of the pain that you're in or the, the problem that you're facing. And that happens relatively quickly within usually about two weeks, uh, depending on what's going on, uh, especially if you comply to the, the care standards that we give you. Um, and that's pretty across the board. And then there's this like 20% that just had, kind of lingers on for a while. And that's because we've, the 80% is mostly backlog. It's stuff that you haven't had work done or addressed and it's just built up over time. That's all the little chronic stuff that you just accumulate over time. It's what a lot of people attribute to normal aging, um, which really isn't normal aging. It's just like low upkeep. Um, it's like, oh, this house is so old. There's stuff and there's mess everywhere. Well, yeah, you got to clean it up. 
So that's kind of what we're doing in, in the physiological sense, in the, in the body sense. Um, so about 80% of all the stuff that's going on will go away within, within a relatively short period of time, depending on you know health status of the patient and how, how you're feeling when it starts. Um, but then the chronic stuff, or the that's that's sort of the long term, and it takes uh, that can take anywhere from a few months to a year and a half. I mean, I've I've seen some people that just stay under regular care because they don't ever want to get back to that place where they felt really terrible. They just want to feel good, uh, and they don't want to have breakdowns and they don't want to have chronic pain anymore. So they just stay under care, which is great. Um, obviously, I don't push for that. I, I offer it. I let everybody choose how they want to interact with what we have. Um, but the, uh, that last little 20%, that's sort of us guiding you along so that as you start to heal, if anything goes off course, we kind of nudge you back to where you're supposed to be. And then if you go off course again, we kind of nudge you back to where you're supposed to be. And we maintain that healing space for you so that your body can heal more thoroughly, more completely, and you become stronger and more robust. So you're less likely to have re-injuries in the future. Um, so by properly analyzing what's going on ahead of time, when what person walks in the door to look at the mechanism of injury to see if it was acute, to see if it was chronic, to see if it was a compound. Um, that really gives me good clinical information and I'm able to assess that very quickly and I can give you a very, very clear and very definite sense of what I think would do the best to serve you under care here on our office. So I hope that helps. I know that uh, a lot of people have questions on that. Hopefully that answers questions for you. If you have any questions based on that or any comments you want to leave for us to review, by all means, go ahead and leave those below. I always love to see those. It lets me know that what we're doing here is helpful um, or that we can kind of get into some other stuff. Uh, it leads to further discussion. Uh, obviously, I can't give any medical advice over the internet, uh, but you're welcome to always stop in and have a conversation with me in person. Um, yeah, that's it for today and uh, stay tuned. Thank you.